Bulletproof Radio, a state of high performance. You're listening to Bulletproof Radio with Dave Asprey. Today's episode, I've got a couple guys on who are going to really show where technology has evolved that you've probably never heard of. And you're going to learn some things that I've been doing that you might have heard me mention on stage at the biohacking conference, things you might have heard me mention here and there uh, that sound a little bit out there, but that are profoundly uh, impactful. And if what I'm saying is real, and it is, uh, then it means you've got to reconsider some of the core assumptions you make. It doesn't mean what you believe is wrong or useless. It just means there might be another layer to what we're working on here. And on that note, what we're going to talk about is something called the biocharger. And there are four kinds of energy in nature. And you're going to learn about those four kinds of energy. And what I like about the biocharger is it's a subtle energy revitalization platform, even though it's not that subtle. (laughs) You're going to see if you watch the video that I have here, it's got sparks coming out the top of it. And frankly, it looks like something out of science fiction. But everyone, including, I'm going to call uh, people who don't know much about biohacking who are relatively skeptical, they sit there for five minutes and go, what just happened? Like, I just shifted my state in a very notable very notable way. So we're going to talk about physical, mental performance, and overall health. So this is a weird episode because in addition to the pandemic, we're not all in the same room together. I've got two guys named Jim. So... We've got the inventor of the biocharger named Jim Gerard. Jim, say hi so we know your voice. Years of research on this idea of subtle energy or charging the cells. And he started this concept back in 1993. And for the record, I had my first piece of technology in this domain back in 1997, but it wasn't nearly as cool as uh, what the biocharger has become. And the reason Jim got interested in all this stuff is because he got sick from pesticides and chemicals and had to hack himself, which is kind of cool. And our other guest is Jim Law, who's the CEO. So we've got CEO Jim. CEO Jim, say hi. Hey, David. Jim Law, our CEO here of Biocharger, has been on since 2013 as a co-founder of the company and has been working around just disrupting technologies. And it's kind of a, a cool thing to be able to talk on the business side, like how is subtle energy, how is recharging your cells a business, and then how does it actually work? So without any further ado, let's talk about this. Um, I'm going to go to our geek, Jim Gerard. Jim, describe what this machine looks like, <laughs> and then I'll give you my take on it. But you tell me what it looks like, like what, what's in there. Yeah, so it's basically a, 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 a sophisticated solid-state Tesla coil with the multiple different gases uh, that uh, illuminate in the visible light spectrum. Um, so the idea is generating uh, the four different types of energy, um, but the you know the physical description is just more like a Tesla coil with the really nice 21st century. Uh, display on it that you could actually program it and run it and very easy of use that was a pretty tame description it looks like a glass hexagon with glowing tubes of various colors not led tubes but glowing like old school neon and argon and things like that with a piece of metal coming out the top with lightning come out coming off of it it is exactly what should be in frankenstein's laboratory if he was a little bit cooler and like was a distant cousin of tron Sure. Um, is that a better description? Yeah, I like that description a little bit better. Right. But yeah, so, that or the flux capacitor. Ah, yeah, it's got an element of, of, of doc in it for sure. Yeah, so does Jim. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, well, what the reason that I was attracted to this is that back when I believed that uh, what I had going on was uh, Lyme disease, uh, before I figured out it was toxic mold uh, back in you know, the, the late 90s, uh, I became aware of uh, this book, Electromagnetism in Life, and Robert uh, Becker's work. And, and there's a lot of information out there about how energy affects the body. So I bought a Rife machine, which is based on the work of Royal Rife. And Tesla borrowed a lot of his medical side of things from Rife. And we're going to go deep in the history of Tesla and Rife and how, uh, and how, and a couple other inventors, and how Jim leveraged their work and studied with some of their protégés. But in my case, just to 
illustrate for you when you're listening to this how real this type of tech is. I had this machine. It was looked like a CB radio because it was with a giant amplifier and a tube of neon gas next to it and a little digital frequency thing. And you could type in a frequency and then it would run that frequency through the charged gas. And you can say, Dave, we thought you were a dork already. You already inject testosterone, whatever. But this is like clearly the land of insanity. But here's one of the stories of what this thing could do. Uh, a person I was with at the time, um, because of toxic mold, <laughs> had these things that were herpes lesions inside their sinuses. Now, that's a really painful condition. So I'm sitting in the living room, the person's in a chair, and I'm thinking to myself, well, I don't really have anything in that family of viruses, but I'm just gonna put it on the frequency that I know is associated with that. And I'm not gonna say a word to this person, they're reading a book, like completely blinded, no idea they're part of an experiment. So I hit go on the machine. Within five seconds, um, she totally drops the newspaper she's reading, stands up, grabs her nose, and starts screaming, turn it off, turn it off, turn it off. Now, I don't think that was placebo, right? <laughs> it wasn't placebo because according to the work of Rife, it was vibrating to the point of destruction, the viruses that were there, and it created pain right where the viruses were. Now, I stopped using the machine because I didn't know which of the 10,000 frequencies to run to make myself better. It was kind of a pain. So it was just a series of frustration for me and I got rid of it and bought an infrared sauna. <laughs> Full disclosure. <laughs> now, if you're listening to this, either I'm completely you know, trying to sell you a bill of goods or it just sounds too crazy. It's It actually happened. And it was one of the things that most validated my belief in this kind of tech. And I sort of shelved it because I didn't know how I'd ever be able to know what frequencies to use. And then along come the biocharger guys, and you've been innovating for a long time, and I finally got a chance to check uh, to check out your tech at uh, my buddy Andrew's house in uh, in New York City. And I'm there with the supermodels on my Instagram stories, uh, Joey Corrigan, uh, who's really cool. Uh, I just had a random party. I don't typically get to hang out with supermodels being you know, a biohacking uh, married guy and whatever, but it was a cool party. And so we're both sitting there like getting zapped from the top of the machine on one of those Instagram repeating loop things whose name I just forgot. And uh, it's one of my funniest videos. You just like this so random that you just sit there kind of going, zzz, zzz. but I will just tell you, you can feel it. You feel it in your bones. You feel it in your tissues. You feel it in the shift in your brain. Uh, and it's you solve the problem of knowing what frequencies to run by putting recipes together. So for listeners, this is why I'm having the guys on the show because I want you to know about this kind of technology and I want you to know that it has real effects. And I think that the two gyms here have actually solved the problem of knowing what to run in terms of frequencies to get the results you want. So long description of it. Jim, you actually studied under a protege of Nikola Tesla and Two of the techs we're talking about here are Tesla coils and the MWO or multiple wave oscillation technologies. Walk me through how you met Dr. Oroville Fitz, how you guys connected, and what did you learn from him out of Tesla's work? Yeah, so for me, how I uh, originally met him is, um, as you'd mentioned earlier, I had a landscaping company, uh, was exposed to a bunch of pesticides and herbicides, and uh, thought that was part of my uh, issues surrounding the alopecia. Uh, so I went to an organic farm convention and at the organic farm convention, believe it or not, is where I learned about Nikola Tesla and uh, actually met a, uh, a guy named Louis Osborne, who uh, eventually introduced me to Orville Fitz. So uh, Louis took the liking to me and introduced me to, uh, you know, all this different technology and said, you got to meet this guy. And, uh, so I struck up a conversation with them several times on the phone and uh, convinced them to let me come down there and spend some time with them. So, you know, he was in his 80s, so you, I wasn't really getting a, you know, a lot of time per day with them. But uh, we'd spend a few hours uh, talking about various things, experiments and things. And he had a whole library of information that was there. So uh, during those down times, I spent a lot of time just reading about you know, Nikola Tesla and all his work. And uh, um, 
after about six months, I came back home and uh, decided, you know, I, I think I'm ready to start to build and experiment with these devices. So I really got into Nikola Tesla's work. Uh, and I was building all sorts of different types of coils. I was building, you know, large ones that were shooting the big 10 foot sparks to the, uh, you know, I tried the multi-wave oscillators with the different concentric rings. And uh, I was just really fascinated with any part of the electricity. And uh, uh, shortly afterwards, I read about Lahosky's work with the, you know, that, that multi-wave oscillator. And I thought, well, let's just start building some of those devices. What, so what I are expl- those? Explain what an MWO is. So a multi-wave oscillator basically utilizes a spark gap Tesla coil that they have. Uh, they On the original, they had these concentric rings that would generate uh, multiple wavelengths. And uh, he was noted for... Uh, developing the MWO or multi-wave oscillator. So what uh, Lahosky was able to do with this Tesla coils generate these wide range of frequencies and harmonics. And uh, there was a, you know, a long history of success with it that uh, uh, he was using it in thirties and forties. And there was, you know, books that documented those effects with it. And I thought, you know, as anyone else who's reading some of these uh, conspiracy type stories, you would think, you know, I, I thought, well, maybe I should start building some of these. So, um, you know, I have a, a good mathematical background, but I also have a background of, you know, bu- building and experimenting. My father, uh, uh, you know, we had a really nice garage growing up and we were always working on all sorts of projects. So uh, I was really good with my hands, but I was also really good with numbers. And that was a good combination for me to just start experimenting and building, uh, you know, different devices. And uh, shortly later, I came across uh, Rife's work. Yeah. Talk about conspiracy stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So again, I was really curious about it. And, you know, Rife was doing it a completely different way. So when you look at the multi-wave oscillator, it utilized the Tesla coils, its carrier wave, whereas Rife was doing this unique thing with his, uh, a shortwave radio that he was doing pulse width modulation. So essentially what Rife discovered is variable frequencies and harmonics. And like you, you know, I built my first one. I used a, a vacuum tube, 1920s heat clip, uh, shortwave radio. It had the little crystals that you had to program into it. And uh, I had that function generator like you were talking about that you would have to program in. And I really liked the idea, but it was so uh, clumsy in operation that it wasn't very useful. Like you said, you'd have these numbers you'd have to program. So each each program or frequency you'd run, you'd have to program each one. And I sort of put it off to the side, but started to evolve the multi, or the uh, the biocharger, the earlier version of the biocharger. So I utilized that Tesla coil, but then I wanted to expand a little bit further into it. So uh, the idea of the multiple wavelengths that Lahosky spoke about, um, I wanted to add to the visible light spectrum. So uh, I was one of the first ones that I actually was the first one and actually patented the multi-gas discharge tubes where uh, we're generating a, um, a wide range of frequencies in the visible light spectrum. So, you know, I evolved the biocharger, but I, I wanted to work towards mixing the biocharger with the uh, Rife machine because I saw the benefits of Rife with the variable frequencies and harmonics, but I also saw the benefits of the high voltage, the magnetic fields that you get with the Tesla coil, and the uh, uh, the high voltage. You know, the high voltage is probably the most important part, I believe. So by com- by working towards that direction, I kept on evolving it over the years until about uh, 2011. I pushed the spark gap as far as I could. I, I was able to do some coarse pulsing with it. I could do some low frequency pulsing with it, but I really couldn't do what Rife was all about. So in 2012, I came out with the vacuum tube Tesla. I started working with the vacuum tube Tesla coil. And with the vacuum tube Tesla coil, that allowed me to do that pulse width modulation. So for the first time, I was actually able to attach a, um, a function generator to a Tesla coil and start to produce variable frequencies and harmonics. Um, So for most people who don't understand what variable frequencies and harmonics, um, the traditional spark gap Tesla coil generates literally hundreds of thousands of harmonics and frequencies that span. What what does that matter? Like why would someone listen? Okay, so I got 100,000 harmonics. What does a harmonic do for the human body? So actually what, what do frequencies do to the human body? So if you really think about it, everything vibrates. 
So we'll first look at the atomic level. So atoms literally vibrate at the speed of light. So that's the reason why I use those different elements in the tubes is uh, when you excite uh, various gases or elements uh, to fluorescent, they'll release photons of light. So um, the idea that atoms vibrate at the speed of light, and then you could take molecules. Molecules literally vibrate uh, slightly lower than the visible light. So when you take uh, elements or atoms and start to mix them together and make molecules, they begin to vibrate what they call in the molecular spectrum. So the molecular band spectrum laid out by physicists started about a half a gigahertz and go all the way up to visible light. And then you have your atomic nuclei that also vibrate. So the cell membrane literally is vibrating. And uh, anyone that's ever had an MRI, for instance, they, they utilize that technology. So what the MRIs actually do is they put you in a magnetic field. They bounce radio waves off of you. And how you emit or how those radio waves emit, absorb the energy, uh, determine what those images are. So in reverse uh, logic with that, there's a correlation between frequencies and atoms, molecules, as well as the, uh, the atomic nuclei st structures. So when you begin to vibrate uh, at specific frequencies, you can begin to affect all those. And uh, so what the multi-wave oscillator was doing is it's generating that whole spectrum of frequencies that cover the, the well, first the atomic side, the molecular side, and then the, uh, the atomic nuclei, the cell membrane side of the vibration. So as you begin to produce specific frequencies, you can impact things on a cellular level, uh, much like um, I like to compare it to music. So in music, if you have two different notes of the same or two, two different notes, you generate harmonies or harmonics. And what we're able to do with changing these pulse frequencies with the carrier wave is we can generate different sets of harmonies or harmonics, much like when in music, if I take um, if I produce those two notes, I generate harmonies or harmonics, but if I change one of those notes, I generate different harmonies or harmonics. So what we're able to do with the biocharger is by changing those pulse frequencies, and this is what Rife discovered, you generate unique sets of harmonies or harmonics that cover that spectrum of the, the atomic, the molecular, as well as the, uh, uh, you know, the nuclear part of the vibration. And, and what is happening theoretically is that when you're increasing the vibration rate of these molecules, the reactions that drive life are easier to do. So the the enzymatic reactions and, and things like that, I mean, do if you take you know, Petri dishes and put them around a biocharger, do things grow faster? Do they grow slower? Like, like what happens? How do you know this is doing anything to us? Well, much of this has been uh, laid out by many other people that have done the research. So uh, we're not a medical device. Um, and, you know, we've done experiments with it, with, with the biocharger, but there's a long history behind these four energy types and the effects of these four energy types, whether it's the magnetic field, the PEMF, the high voltage, the frequencies and harmonics, or the visible light. All four of those have been heavily researched and all those different effects with it. So all, all of those things are real biohacking ways of interacting with cells, and we know different cells respond to or generate those fields within the human body. Um, what, how do we know that, it's, that these aren't bad? I mean, people are talking about 5G. Um, I've been talking for years about electrosmog and things like that. What makes the type of magnetic fields and other electromagnetic fields that the biocharge is making, what differentiates those from the ones that pollute things? Well, the big difference is is how nature does it. So if we, um, if you think about it, we're surrounded by this uh, natural harmonics and frequencies from uh, literally the, we have 100 lightning strikes on the planet every single second. Um, every other planet has that same thing going on. The sun through solar storms and solar flares and things like that, they generate these wide ranges of frequencies and harmonics, but they're pulse signals. Everything is a pulse signal. Um, Whereas with the uh, um, man-made EMF, everything is a continuous signal. So if you think about 
the power the power lines are probably our biggest electric smog that we have that's around so um, that's a continuous wave if it was a pulse wave motors would be surging and pulsing and the problem with these uh, what I would consider continuous waves whether it's the power line or the cell phone signals or the microwave signals they're all a continuous wave they're not the way nature does it. And the problem with those continuous waves, it begins to entrain the cell. It doesn't allow the cell to go back to its natural resting point. And that's the biggest dis distinction between uh, natural energy or the biocharger and uh, man-made energy. I, I would encourage you, if you're listening to this going, okay, that was, that was definitely a, a meaningful amount of science there. Think of it like this. The body hates a steady state, and that's why you take a cold shower the way I've been telling you for 10 years or get in ice occasionally. That is a very dramatic pulse <laughs> of cold in this case, right? Or you can fast. Oh, there's no calories right now. It's a dramatic drop in calories, and then it comes back, whether it's intermittent one or not. Uh, and then almost all of the other technologies. Oh, you wanted to grow muscle faster? Increase the spike of demand on the muscle. So get to failure faster, put on muscle faster, right? You wanna do intermittent hypoxic training, which has been a big part of Upgrade Labs. Oh, increase, it's just a brief period, but it's a pulse of time. Ah, you've got no air, what am I gonna do? You're gonna get stronger. And so the idea here is the pulse that you get uh, from the earth is a, 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 um, an intermittent thing that may be hormetic, but there is a steady state 7.83 hertz Schumann resonance here that seems to be the timing signal for the human body. Are you interfering with that with the biocharger or is that solid? Well, that is not really a continuous wave if you think about it. They're actually, the, the Schumann ma resonance is made up of those 100 lightning strikes every second. So they're actually a series of 100 events per second that's actually happening and it's not that. Yeah, and as, as Jim uh, uh, made me aware to think about today is, our heartbeat is a pulse. It isn't, you know, it's that sudden pulse and then it, it dampens out and it's another pulse. So life is really about a pulse. It's not about a continuous wave. And uh, that's really the differentiation yeah. between it. it. Even the heartbeat is not a continuous wave, which you might imagine, but heart rate variability, which is a major part of the biohacking idea. So, oh wait, you mean the spacing between your heartbeat should be non-regular? Uh, because when you have a variance in the space there, which means it isn't a rhythmic, so it's da dum da dum da dum instead of da dum da dum da dum, that means you're basically getting little randomly spaced pulses there instead of having them all all lined up. Because when they're lined up, you're actually weaker. All right, talk to me about cellular voltage. In fact, uh, you reference research at the University of Michigan that says there's 15 million volts per meter within the cell. Talk to me about what that is, why that matters, and what you're doing to it. Yeah, so really that what, what that is stating is the cell membrane acts like an insulator or dielectric, uh, much like a capacitor. So inside there, it's, it's, it resists the flow of electricity. So it actually forms a charge. So on a more of a biology um, perspective, you have neg or negative charge on the inside of the cell, and you have this positive charge on the outside of the cell or not, uh, positive ions on the outside of the cell and negative ions on the inside of the cell. And that actually creates a stress across the cell membrane as that charge of 15 million volts. So as we age or as the cell becomes less healthy, its ability to hold that charge is diminished basically because the cell uh, membrane becomes a little bit more conductive and less insulative. And when that happens, it holds less charge across that. And when that happens, normal cellular function doesn't work. So that's really the advantage of the voltage is it helps to trigger the cell membrane to deliver uh, energy from the outside of the cell membrane into the inside of the cell membrane. So in normal cell function, that will naturally occur. But as we age, that triggering mechanism that allows and creates the ion channels for everything to flow through it, the voltage isn't sufficient enough and then what will happen is you know the cell is just sitting there not really doing anything it doesn't start as normal cell function where it creates the ion channels that deliver the hormones the proteins the uh, nutrients as well as you know, part of that detoxification effect that's all 
related by gating that cell membrane. And the way you can gate it is through external voltages, especially in the, when we're less healthy, when that's not happening. And uh, uh, this will help to trigger that and help to deliver it to create that normal cell function. One of the things I've, I've noticed is there are altered states you can go into in order to get stuff done. And most people listening have heard of this thing called a flow state. And I've done some podcasts about that and different ways to get into a flow state and all. But there's another state that's correlated with a very advanced Zen meditation. Uh, and it's, it's called a, a gamma brainwave. When I write my books, I actually run a small electrical current across my brain in the gamma frequency <laughs> on occasion. And lately we've had some breakthroughs at 40 Years of Zen, my neuroscience company where we can uptrain this rare brainwave that most neuroscientists say you can't really train. So, for instance, uh, last week, I was able to consciously increase my gamma by 20% in about an hour. So I, I know the feeling of gamma because when you turn that up, all of a sudden, like it's the floodgates to ideas just open up. Uh, and and it's, it's just so easy and, and also, oh yeah, I could solve this that way and that way. And it's, it's like, it's hard to get there, uh, but it's such a beautiful state. So I said, all right, I'm going to try this out on the biocharger. <laughs> so I went to the biocharger, and you guys can look at my usage records uh, and see what I did. I did the, it was actually one harmonic above gamma, the 125. Uh, and I put this on for whatever the thing is, 10, 12 minutes. And I'm sitting there, I've got a notepad. I'm like, whoa, same state. So, so you're actually turning on, uh, at least in my perception, I didn't, it, you can't put an EEG machine on someone doing the machine because the machine generates current that would blow out the amp on the EEG by, because it, it would basically affect the wires. But I know very well I'm in that state and I probably, if I wired myself up right away afterwards, probably would have had residuals of it. But how are you able to turn on a specific brain state with the biocharger? How, how would that be? So uh, we have some of the recipes that are designed for that. So we, you know, the brainwave activity, you know, starts from basically five hertz all the way up to about 100 hertz. So that's the alpha, beta, theta, um, delta, and gamma rays. So uh, we have recipes that pulse the biocharger within those spectrums. And we find those to be very powerful, especially for the, the meditation to really get that inner focus, focus or as well as creating those new ideas. You know, we like to do some of those recipes to, uh, you know, to draw out some of our um, new ideas and things like that. And that's all based off of those uh, below 100 hertz recipes that we, you know, that we do the pulsing with. And that's all within that brainwave activity. It's uh, it's definitely something that I noticed, and the inflammation thing is also noticeable. There's a, a set for what you guys call oxygenation on that recipe. Uh, what is very noticeable on that one, you'll probably say I use that one the most, I sit there, and you run it, and the body temperature goes up. <laughs> you're, you're turning on mitochondrial respiration. Anyway, why am I hot when I'm sitting here doing this, and I wasn't before? And I can be like, well, I'm a little bit, you know, I'm not feeling perfectly laser focused right now. And at the end of that, I'm just, I'm on. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty impressed with that. What's going on? How are you oxygenating? I mean, it sounds a little bit out there, but it, I'm seeing it. Um, well, um, we have a team of uh, researchers and developers that we're putting together the, the recipes. So uh, we like to go out and just start to look at some of the data that's out there. Uh, we like to see things that uh, you know relate to oxygen levels that we can uh, work with. There's also the, you know, with the corona discharge, there's uh, a little bit of ozone that's being generated from that. So there is a, a, it, not much that you can smell, but that ionization in the air that um, uh, helps to uh, stimulate some of that oxygen generation. So it's really a combination of the frequencies that we use as well as the the voltages, but you know even the visible light part of it, all that interacts together with, uh, you know, increasing, you know, cellular function at all levels. About a month ago, uh, I was at an antique store here on Vancouver Island and they had this device I hadn't seen in a long time. It was called the Violet Ray. And this is from the 1940s. And it's the coolest thing. It still works. And I actually, a friend's like, hey, I want to try it. And she was having plantar fasciitis and it went away. 
in three minutes of using this device, but it's this handle, it looks like a soldering iron or something. You you turn it on and there's a, a tube with full of vacuum or maybe a noble gas, I don't know. And the tube starts to glow with this violet color and you touch it in your hand and little sparks come off of it. And where you, where you run this current, it it becomes warm, circulation increases, inflammation goes down. And if you look at these online, they're still on eBay and everyone says, oh, quack medicine didn't work, but they sold millions of these things because people could see, they could feel that they were working throughout the the 30s and 40s and 50s uh, and before they just kind of fell out of fashion. What's the difference between what you're doing and a violet ray? So the violet ray utilized a, a, a different type of Tesla coil. It was more of that spark gap Tesla coil, but it was not a is nearly high voltage is what we're using. So with the higher voltages, that allowed us to create a little bit of distance with it. So whereas before, you know, you're you're touching that, and that's really where you get an effect. But we're, we found out that if you get higher voltages with it, you could get more distance from it, which allows more people to experience the biocharger. And it's not quite as invasive as feeling those sparking and uh, that you were getting it with it, but uh, the spectrum of frequencies and the light energy and all that, you're really getting similar. Um, one of the drawbacks with that style was a spark gap Tesla coil, so you couldn't vary the frequencies that were generated with it. So uh, that was one of the drawbacks that I always saw with that spark gap design that you would normally get with a Rife machine type of effect where you could change the frequencies and harmonics. I do like it that you can fit, I don't know, eight or 10 people, some number of people around the machine. As long as you're within six feet of it, you're all getting, you, you can feel it. And uh, some people are a little skeptical, and it, it's kind of funny because there's such a, a buildup of of current or field. I don't know. You're, you're, I have an engineering background, but I'm not really sure what's going on there. But all I know is, if someone who hasn't been in the field for a little while walks up and touches you, where they touch you, you see it like a zap, and and like you'll you know half inch gap spark will do, and they'll, you'll both kind of ouch. Uh, what's going on with that? Like, like explain the electrical stuff on there. So w- what's happening is the biocharger is inducing the voltage. Uh, so it's actually making the air more conductive, which, uh, makes more to your body than your whole body becomes this, uh, connector to the biocharger through the air, through the, you know, the high voltage charge in the air. So what happens is you're at a higher potential. So when somebody reaches towards you, one of you is going to be a slightly lower potential because you're not equally distanced from the, you know, the different insulations and things. So whoever's at the higher potential will jump to the lower potentials. So there's always going to be a spark between it. And, you know, even some of my earlier experiments where I was shooting the 10 foot lightning char- discharges, we used to be able to pull six inch sparks off of people standing next to it. So uh, it's really the, that voltage is that driver that, that delivers it. And that's, with the beauty of the biochargers, we're not physically connecting to it, but we're able to broadcast that through the air. Okay. One of the guys we mentioned who, there's sort of four major schools of electrical and magnetic inventors who you combined into the biocharger. And one of the ones that I've studied the most is Royal Rife. And, and for people listening, a lot of people haven't heard of Rife's work, but he was a contemporary of Tesla. He died a year before I was born. And in 1939, the founder of the American Medical Association, Lawrence Fishbein, uh, came to Royal Rife and said, hey, um, you've made this incredible microscope. You made five of them that let you look at live viruses in, in, inside cells. And what Rife had done is he said, you know what? Uh, I work for Zeiss Optics and I want to make the world's best microscope. And he realized if he was going to see really tiny things, he couldn't illuminate them with light because the frequency of light when it was illuminated didn't work. So we started using radio frequencies as the light because when he amplified it enough, it would become visible. He could see what was going on. So these were groundbreaking microscopes, especially for the time, because you didn't have to kill everything like you do with an electron microscope. And what he noticed was if he changed the radio frequency, that the cells would start to vibrate and some of them would explode. And he spent huge amounts of time staring in a microscope, figuring out what frequencies would blow up pneumonia or tuberculosis or whatever, cancer or whatever the heck he was trying to target and making these frequencies of tables. Well, the founder of the AMA came to him and said, I want to buy your tech. And he said, I don't want to buy it. And then within a year, he was branded a quack, shut down. They burned his records. And there's all kinds of, when you talk about conspiracy kind of stuff, there was definitely some bad stuff that happened. Was that 60, was 80 years ago or something? And that's pretty well documented. In fact, I'd say very well documented. And so Rife, I consider to be one of the the really big electrical geniuses that got kind of stymied 
in this war, uh, war of science that started around 1910, 1920, around is the body electrical or chemical? And there were two very strong camps, and the chemical people won. They won the war, but it was a PR war. In fact, back then they didn't have PR, they hadn't named it yet, they just called it propaganda. <laughs> but uh, there was a war, and it was a war for the mindset of science. And what's happening now with the biocharger and with you know, the fact that the sunlight matters, <laughs> all of these, these things out there, it's that, you know what? We are simultaneously electrical and chemical, and all chemical reactions are ultimately electrical, which means they're also ultimately quantum. And I don't mean quantum woo, I mean quantum biology, because it's a field you can get a PhD in around quantum effects that we don't really understand, except we make processors around quantum, so it must be a thing, or you couldn't get quantum processors to work. So we keep peeling these levels away, and most people still think in terms of chemistry and you know calories in, calories out, we're meat robots, but it turns out we're all of those things. And Rife was, I think, one of the original geniuses there. There's two other guys, though. And this is just for, if you're in the audience, you don't know who that is. Well, there's your, your Royal Rife, R-I-F-E. But you also talk about a couple other people who are much less known in, in the evolution of the biocharger. Uh, and so you're kind of standing on the shoulder of giants here, but tell me about Lahovsky and Gershweitz. What did those people do? So uh, Lahovsky was all about, uh, you know, he had a really good success with uh, um, using radio waves uh, for health and wellness. And uh, he was very well documented. He actually wrote the book called The Secret of Life. And he actually did a whole bunch of different experiments proving that you know we are more electrical beings and we are driven by electricity primarily the cosmic electricity uh than um we realize and our bodies are really electric you know the universe of, is electric if you really think about it i mean those lightning discharges that are going on we're surrounded by these frequencies and harmonics from cosmic waves and cosmic rays and all that stuff that's around us, we're just, we're, we are really electrical beings and our bodies are developed in this sea of electricity. And, you know, if you think about it, you know, we're on this earth that's generating this massive electromagnetic generator that's spinning around, that's generating all these uh, lightning discharges and stuff. They have a major influence on how our cells evolve, how, how we've evolved in general. You know, this is since the, you know, the, beginning of the big bang is all this energy that's uh that we're being surrounded by so um you know when you really think about everything we are electrical you know chemistry is electrical you got electron in orbit and charges you know it's um uh, that's the basis i've got one more a futuristic uh geek question for you uh, i fundamentally understand we haven't talked about jerry Tennant's work on uh, the fact that there is a, a electrical current associated with healing of wounds and it's very very fundamental things there's a guy at the karolinska institute who wrote a wonderful massive 800 hundred dollar, 500 page book on electromagnetism and electricity inside the cell he wouldn't publish it until he retired because he was afraid he'd get kicked out as dean of the medical school at karolinska but so there's, there's all this incredible stuff so if you make the radical assumption that the last hundred years of people doing various medical things with these four big energies that are incorporated in the biocharger, that it's a safe and reasonable assumption that electromagnetism has an effect on life, as you just talked about, wouldn't it be possible for us to design a replacement for 5G, 4G, 802.11, mobile phone networks, even our power distribution network, which is pretty screwed up in terms of, of life, to make one that actually enhances human biology but still gives us the ability to have our iPhones? Do you think that's possible? I think that that's really what Tesla's original plan was with the worldwide wireless transmission of power that he actually wanted to do. And I, I, I firmly believe that, but there's a lot of issues in and around that as far as, uh, um, you know, that dated back all the way back to when Tesla was around, you know, he was originally building the Warren Cliff Tower in uh, Long Island, New York, and Marconi or um, what, uh, Morgan thought it was, uh, yeah, J.P. Morgan was the one who thought it was uh, for uh, radio transmission worldwide. And once he found out it was for power transmission, then they defunded Tesla. And for 40 years, uh, he really didn't um, 
make any more movement towards that just because he was defunded by everyone and basically died a pulper. Now, what's what I believe is going to happen and when I put on my far futures hat is the classic disruption model. So there will be emerging evidence as if the hundreds of studies out there show that there are negative effects from some wireless frequencies at some strengths in some locations. It's not universal. And right now, the benefit of wireless is pretty strong, but it's not without risk. I measured a 15% reduction in the bone density of the femur where I carry my cell phone versus the other side, and I don't carry it near my junk because I like my sperm to swim. Thank you very much. And there's good evidence around those. So that said, I really appreciate the ability to use a phone because it's useful. So someone's going to come along. There will be enough of that evidence. There'll be enough sick people and they're going to design the next generation, we'll call it 6G, and it's going to be good for humans. And it will be a multi-trillion dollar, 20 year rollout that makes Cisco systems and Huawei look like child's play. That is the kind of money that we're looking at on the table. So if you're listening to this and you're young and you have this kind of a wizard mind, go build that because everybody wants it. And there's no reason we shouldn't do it. But those are the kind of stakes I think we're playing with, but I wanted to gut check that to see if that's actually a real vision or if there's some engineering obstacles that I haven't considered. Your answer is maybe? Yeah, I think that there's definitely a possibility with it. Not that I could say that I, I, I could do it right now, but uh, um, yeah, I, I, I believe that uh, hmm. Tesla um, was one of the most brilliant minds ever. And uh uh, we have yet to really hit the surface of what he was actually doing. And once we fully understand it, I think that we will see things transform in the power industry as well as communication. Okay. Well, th- thank you for that. And thank you for kind of the brief walk through the history, the evolution of what you put together in the biocharger. And I will tell you, I've had an original design MWO. I had the original Rife machine. Um, all of these things were m- moderately effective, bulky, difficult to use with... Uh, hard to predict results, right? And of course, a variety of PEMF devices, which I've had better luck with actually, uh, but they don't have multiple resonances, but at least I can you know, put the PEMF on something that hurts and it stops hurting. So you've packed all this stuff together. It's not a replacement for full on PEMF, you know, muscle regeneration stuff, but um, in a usable form that supports essentially a small room full of people with a very noticeable effect, which is the first time in you know, 25 years of playing around with all this stuff I've been able to, whoa, okay. Like all this stuff lines up. I'm pretty stoked about it. So I want to ask um, our CEO, Jim, uh, about uh, kind of what what is the future for biocharge? You've got this cool device. You said it's a non-medical device, uh, which is a good move uh, because it's for performance and recovery. But what are the things that people are doing with it? Sure. So, so first of all, just hearing a little bit of Jim's background and, and the efforts that he made, it's pretty clear that he was pushing the envelope all the way. And uh, when we first uh, when we first connected, which was actually through uh, our our sons who went to school together and played football together, and I would I would uh, my son would come home and say. Uh, Oh, Mr. Gerard was uh, working out in his garage. He had this thing that looked like a transformer off a telephone pole. And we'd see these things light up and, you know. So uh, with, a, with a heavy dose of skepticism, I had, I got to see what this guy's up to. And what, um, what he was doing was, especially with the analog technology that he was using, which was basically the same stuff Rife and Tesla and Lahosky were using, um, it just seemed like, um, first off, it wasn't commercially viable um, because everyone was a one-off. And um, That's why I hadn't you know, really talked about it much for that reason, because how do I tell someone to go use this? I couldn't do it. So to your point, yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, and it was interesting as we, as we kind of, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm more from the high tech background and, uh, but I, I like using technology to disrupt an old way of doing things. And I'd never imagined being involved in, in something that had to do with health and wellness like this, but it's, it, it drove me because when I spoke with some of his clients, um, you know, he'd make make one unit and ship it out and somebody else would reach out to him. And first of all, people were coming to him. He wasn't advertising in any way. And after I spoke to about 20 of them over a, a period of maybe a week and a half, two weeks, 
uh, I'd, I'd hear the great anecdotal stories about, you know, it showing up in a hundred pieces or, you know, it, uh, you know, Jim, it didn't work and he had, they had to send it back and it shocked the cat and they got shocked and all of these different things, but in every case, but it works and I love it. And, you know, this thing has changed our lives. So knowing that, um, there's no way that, um, that we have, um, the resources to try and go down a medical path with this. We said, well, look, what's, if it's a, a subtle energy revitalization platform, which it is, what can we do and how, how can we apply it and how can we make it commercially viable? So we essentially took, um, you know, step back, looked at what Jim did, brought in a team of experts and understood what kind of what what it was doing using a lot of different advanced uh, technology to measure uh, different types of energies. And then we didn't want to lose the special sauce, but we said, okay, so what would Tesla, Rife, Lahosky, Gershwitz do if they were alive today? They wouldn't be using spark gap and, you know, uh, vacuum tubes, et cetera. And, and you know, uh, they, they wouldn't be using voltage controllers. They would be using the cloud. They would be using digital and, and solid state componentry. And they would open it up as a platform rather than limit um, how it could be used. And so that became our mission, and we, we took the product off the market. Um, we formed a, a great partnership. Um, we, we went out and looked at um, the technology and were able to, um, more effectively than we even thought in 18 months, be able to have the first prototype of a solid state uh, biocharger. Um, By the way, then, so what a solid state biocharger means if you're a non Silicon Valley guy, it means it has a little thing like an Android device, a touch screen that's actually controlled. You got to understand the original days of this, it's knobs and buttons and dials and loose wires and alligator clips. And I did all that stuff and it was a huge pain in the ass. And so now you sit down, it, it's this cool looking thing. It's all laser cut and I actually think it's laser cut, whatever it is. It's, it's a clean, modern piece of machinery. But you go in, there's a little menu, and you say, okay, which, which of these programs do I have in here? You call them recipes. And you pick the one that says oxygen, you hit start, and then you sit there, and the machine goes boom, 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 and we'll, we'll cut some video in. It's kind of hard to, to shoot it because you know it, it creates a, a, a pulse of different colored light and EMFs at the same time. If I was running it right now, our, video, or our audio would be kind of like glitching a little bit. So um, you, you do that, and then it works, and then you feel different. <laughs> <laughs> and then you say, oh, I'd want to run a different program. And you do that and you can stick, you know, four or five, whatever people around it. And they all generally are going to feel the same way depending on their own state when they start. So that that's what solid state means is it went from crazy wizard level inventor, uh, garage transformer land into, oh, it's a cool, but little out there looking thing because of there's sparks coming out the top of it. Like there's ozone. It's cool. Uh, but it, it's just push a button and it does what it's supposed to do. And to me, that was, I, at first I was like, I don't really want to talk to these biocharger guys. I hear about you a couple of times, but I have so much experience with this space and it's so hard to translate. Uh, you know, it, you have to really like read the rife papers and, you know, do your diligence and play with this and wiggle this rod. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about. You actually sure. took it all out. It took me a half hour. I put it together. I didn't read the manual uh, until I was done which is probably not a good idea. I didn't put anything in upside down. Uh, but uh, it was it was human level, but more importantly, it was the interface instead of the dumb little inner code that might work. So th that was what got me going. And then I'm like, yeah, but does it work? And you guys gave me a sore neck. I got to tell you that. Um, and here's why. Because I sit there in a, in a chair and you're supposed to be in a plastic chair. So I don't have like that a super comfortable chair there because you don't want to induce a current in a metal chair. So uh, every time I put it on the sleep settings before I go to bed, like it knocks me out. And then I wake up, my head is crooked. Then I got to sit up and go to bed. So there you go. But my heart rate variability is much higher the next morning when I do the biocharger before I go to bed. I can do the sleep one. I can do the inflammation one. And either one of those will raise my heart rate variability on my aura ring. So like I, it, it quantifiably works. And that in and of itself is a business achievement, not just a tech achievement. So I just want to say thanks for making it easy because I... You get tired, at least I do, as a biohacker. Where I can have any piece of biohacking tech in the world, and I've had most of them. <laughs> but if you can't use them because it's too much work, you won't use them. 
Uh, so this is the first time I've ever been happy with anything in the rife side of things uh, because of that. You know, and, and one of the one of the things that, that we designed into it was the ability to allow community inspired efforts to continue to expand the benefits that it can bring. So you mentioned recipes or energy and frequency programs designed for a specific outcome. When we first released the biocharger, we had 10 recipes. You know, we had one for energy, we had one for post workout, pre workout, sleep. Uh, mental clarity, happiness, you know, just kind of a limited set. And, um, you know, the biocharger, as Jim mentioned earlier, when you were talking about kind of the overall effect at the cellular level, uh, that's a broad benefit. So everyone can benefit from having, raising your cellular voltage. And, and Tenet points it out best that, you know, our, our body regenerates a two to three million new cells a second. That's the only way it knows how to heal, how to recover, how to, um, you know, resist stress and how to detoxify. But, you know, it's voltage is key. Voltage is the driver. And if we can look and say, okay, by using these energy types that exist in nature and amplifying and um, replicating them, now, um, you know, in 15 minutes, you can get the benefit of being outside and absorbing those natural sources of energy in nature. It's just we don't in our modern lives. And, you know, Tennant proved that uh, 45% of Americans that have uh, some form of chronic disease all have one common characteristic, and that's inadequate cellular voltage. So we start to say, okay, well, how can we help solve that problem? And so the biocharger on the broad sweeps uh, overall helps do that. But to be able to target specific desired outcomes, let's call them, using these recipes was really the magic and a lot of the IP of what we were able to do. And by building out the cloud infrastructure and allowing every client worldwide to be connected, many of them are researchers and practitioners. And so, you know, again, we first released it, we had 10 recipes. We thought if we got to 100 recipes, that would be the holy grail. Today, we're over 1,000 and growing. So, the beauty of kind of the design of the platform allows us to continually enhance it and add more capabilities um, in addition to update software and, and do things that we didn't think about when we first designed it. So it's got a lot of headroom. Now, right now, it's a, it's a relatively large device. You're going to put in the middle of a living room or something uh, or in the middle of a clinic office or something. And I'm looking at ways to use it in a couple of my different businesses. Uh, and I'm I'm kind of curious. It, it is not a consumer price item right now. I, how many of these are at you know doctors' offices or physical trainers? You know, wh- where where do you normally find a biocharger? Uh, we have uh, th- we have three primary markets. The first one is alternative health and wellness, and uh, those folks come to us in in many cases, uh, uh, acupuncturists, chiropractors. Uh, alternative practitioners, but people looking for their own solution as well. Uh, Then we have people that are interested in peak performance. So obviously athletic performance, you know, we've got all the major, um, you know, sports types. Um, We've also got some very big people that are interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we've got cognitive performance. So I feel that doesn't want to, yeah, who doesn't want to feel? There's also a spiritual aspect of that of it as well. So by being able to provide, um, you know, something that, and you talk about the size of it. Yeah, it's it's 18 inches wide, 22 inches deep, 37 inches high. You can get about four to six people comfortably sitting around it, even socially distanced. Um, but it's a way for people to get um, a social. Uh, there's a communal effect to it, kind of like sitting around the modern day campfire. Um, so, you know, we, we see a lot of um, families now that are bringing them in because, um, you know, somebody brought it home. And when's the last time you could sit down with your kids and not everybody have their phone on? We know the biocharger you can't have your phone on, uh, but we have. <laughs> My phone um, seems to work. When, <laughs> is that a bad thing? No, no. Usually, the touch screen gets affected. Like it, it'll it'll dial the last number you called twenty times in about ten seconds if you <laughs> if you're running the right recipe. So, I, I've definitely um, seen an interview of some recipes. Yeah, uh, we, we've, we've got some anecdotal stories on it, but but people get a, sen- a sense of you know being able to sit there comfortably, enjoy it, doing something positive with other people. There's 
we're in the osteo strong for instance facilities around the country and that's one of the biggest things is the social benefit and people get an immediate effect they like it it's easy to use and they want to come back and do it more it's helping retention um, in those types of businesses and then probably our fastest growing segment of the business are uh, people that are bringing it into their own companies. They're not turning around and offering it as a service like traditionally you would think, but they want to offer it as a benefit for their employees. And um, That's pretty you know, cool. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we do brainstorming sessions around it. It was great to hear you've noticed the same thing. You stop getting sick. You have more energy. People get along better. You get more creative. Um, those are kind of the general, uh, you know, across the board, the general feedback we get from people. Do you guys have a finder on your website for people? So there's a lot of people who are probably going to try it. I mean, it's a you know more more than what ten thousand dollars. It's it's a big, heavy, engineered, awesome device, but it's not the sort of thing that you're sure going to just not pick everyone. Up. Yeah, it, where did you go to just experience it? I actually I should have looked ahead of the show. I didn't. Oh, um, we set something up for you, Dave, and for your listeners, where if you go to biocharger dot com forward slash Dave Asprey, you will see a. Uh, uh, a login to get a free session. So if people if people are interested in buying the system, we got a um, uh, I think a discount code or you know references there. Um, and then uh, more importantly, anyone who's interested in trying a session um, can reach out, um, give us an inquiry, and we will go ahead and connect them with a local biocharger service uh, or uh, offering. Okay, and, that's uh, cool. I, a I should have. Session. I should have checked that out ahead of the show. I knew that we talked about doing something good, but I was thinking, oh, people will just go and find a or find it. But you go there, and there's five hundred dollars off. I just went there right now, and you call, and you guys basically say, "Where are you?" And you hook them up with the right local person. They can just go in and sit near it for twenty minutes or half hour, or whatever, and just say, "Okay, mind blown or mind's not blown." I'm pretty sure I know what's going to happen. Um, pretty sure I know what's going to happen if you give this thing a, a try. So. Uh, all right, that's cool. It's biocharger.com slash Dave Asprey and full disclosure, sponsored episode, all that kind of thing. Um, I got a discount on my on my biocharger and I'm probably going to get a few more for my businesses and stuff like that. So it's all all above board. Uh, but all right, say 500 bucks and uh, if you want to get one and uh, if you run a clinic or uh, something like this, I, I think there's really legs to this. Not because it's this new from nowhere thing. There are four lineages of technology-based energy medicine that have come together. My experience is that there are, in the world, there are wizards. <laughs> and these are human beings who become incredibly obsessed with one or two aspects of wellness. And we've had like uh, Dr. Barry Morgulon has been on the show. You know, Chinese energy medicine, ancient lineage, you know, Dr. Strange kind of stuff where they actually interviewed him for the movie uh, he lived in a monastery, even though he's a UCLA surgeon. He, he's a wizard of that that domain, taking ancient knowledge, bringing it forward, doing the work, and putting it forward. And for every wizard you have that has powers, there's 10 other wizards who cannot actually get out of their own way and make their work available to the world because of whatever reasons. So, so this is a rare case where you've got our geek, Jim, who is the wizard, who has done the 30 years, who did the work with the people who worked with Tesla and these other things, put it together, plus the business operation side of thing to make something that doesn't require the knobs and dials and um, you know the wizard's level of knowledge to use. I am not a wizard, but I, have, I'm, I, I hang with a lot of wizards um, and have built trust with them uh, to the point that I get to play with the toys and I know enough to be dangerous, but I wouldn't try to invent uh, anything close to what you've invented here, Jim. Uh, this isn't my domain, but uh, maybe food and supplements is. So I like that you've got the deep, ancient knowledge woven together and that you just made it easy because I'm so tired of just like trying to, you know, stick electrodes here and insertables there and pee on that stick. I just want the data. Like I want the, the outcome and I don't want to do so much work. And I think you actually crossed the chasm here uh, to use a, I think it's a Gartner term or something from way back in the day. So I, I just want to say thanks, guys, uh, for, for doing the work. If you listen to this show, all right, if you listen to the last 800 or something episodes, I'm generally right more often than I'm wrong. I think I've earned the credit to say that. And, you know, I, I would hope that if you've listened to at least you know, a few dozen shows, you figured that out. I am capable of being wrong. There is zero chance 
that I'm wrong when I say the human body is electrical. <laughs> Even though it still makes some people mad. We just, we know it. If you don't believe me, go lick an outlet. We'll, we'll talk later. Yeah, so, you know, most of us will wait till we're dead. And when we have a heart attack, what's the first thing they do is they put paddles on you and shock you back into life. So <laughs> There you go. Why wait? <laughs> Why wait? The, the difficulty for me was that I grew up in an engineering family. My grandmother subscribes to the Skeptic Inquirer, which is like the original science troll newsletter from the 60s. We're like, nothing new can be real if it doesn't agree with our paradigm of meat robots, right? And so I had to kind of deprogram myself around that and say, you know, I'm just going to go with the data and what works and be open to stuff that shouldn't possibly work given what I know. Uh, and then when you start doing research and saying, oh my God, there's so much here. So if you're listening to this and this is the first time ever, all right, fine. Believe I'm wrong. Go over to that URL, biocharger.com slash Dave Asprey, and just go sit near one of these things, right? And then if you really believe I'm wrong, just try and use your cell phone and see who you call. Because <laughs> there's something going on here. And if you really don't believe me, reach out and shock someone and then see how you feel afterwards. Measure yourself. See how you sleep. Um, it is it is not one of those, oh, you know, I did an ear candle, earwax candle thing, and I'm pretty sure I felt better the next day. Uh, and, you know, I might have had a slightly bigger poop or whatever. Like, this is this is kind of a hammer on the head in a good way. It, it, it is not a small effect or I wouldn't have the guys on the show. I, 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 I want to really underline there's real science, there's real history, there's real new innovation, and you will feel it. I don't know anyone who's been like, I don't, like, there's nothing going on here. I, I've never seen that, but maybe you guys have. So anyway, very strong endorsement. Um, I wasn't all the way sold until I used it for a little while and said, all right, I'm, I'm really pleased with this thing. Uh, so thank you. Awesome. Our pleasure. Thanks for having us. Now, if you guys like today's show, I would love to do more about some of the electrical medicine, electrical biohacking stuff. And I've been a little hesitant on, on two fronts because over the course of designing 10 years ago, how am I going to bring all these disparate spaces together into the universe of biohacking? Uh, I looked at, all right, certainly we want what astronauts are using to recover. We want you know, circadian biology and we want temperature and all this. But if you throw too much of the really juicy stuff that's far out there in all at once, it's too much for it to create the wave of movement and consciousness that I've been working very consciously to create. For instance, in 2011, before the Bulletproof Diet a book came out, right when I first started talking about butter and coffee, if I just said, guys, by the way, I'm going to live to at least 180, and I have these this weird electrical device. I've had one since 1997. Uh, it, it, people just be like, this guy, like, he's, he sleeps in a tinfoil hat. He's completely not credible. So I'm, I'm sort of saying, look, I'm willing to go deeper on electricity, magnetism, life, and I'm already pretty deep there. But if you guys are interested in that, and the other one is peptides. I've been a little bit concerned about that because some of the effects are dramatic. And I put them in my last book, but I didn't bring them up five years ago because I didn't think most of the world was ready until it was available and you didn't have to order weird stuff from Russia. So if you want to hear more about electricity, you want more from biochargers specifically on the show or on the blog, uh, more history of electrical medicine or anything like that, hit me up on Instagram. You can always DM me. You can put it in the comments, whatever. Hit me up on Facebook. Uh, I would love to know. So help guide me as to where your interests are and take me up on this challenge. Go to biocharger.com slash Dave Asprey Find someone, if they're near you, they might be in your neighborhood, who the heck knows, on their website, and just give this thing a try. It'll, it'll blow your mind. you are walk out of there, if you don't believe any of this, going, I had no idea that was possible. If that's possible, what could you do bad with this kind of technology? Because that's the flip side of being a hacker. Hackers noticed in the 90s that our friends at Microsoft uh, might not be telling us what the software was doing, and they didn't like it. So they said, fine, we'll just build our own operating system called Linux. And today, our conversation is being recorded through machines that mostly run Linux or BSD or variants of that. So hackers actually did change the world by taking control of the technology. Biohackers are changing the world of electrical medicine by taking control of the technology. They're changing the world of nutrition by taking control of their nutrition and measuring what it does to their bodies and manipulating it to get what we want, not what someone else wants. So if we acknowledge there's an effect, it is our job as biohackers to use the effect for increasing our own capacities and for increasing the world capacities, not for doing bad things. Uh, so that's why this matters greatly. If you want to hear more on this kind of stuff, 
tell me and I'll bring you more. Thank you for listening. You should go to biocharger.com slash Dave Asprey. Have your mind blown.